Look here. Conservation momentum. Let's look at a couple of these problems. These are kind of cool problems. We're going to look at two things today. This is kind of the easy one. This is the one where it's all in one dimension. And now after that, we're going to look at one where objects fly off in different directions. And that makes them a little tougher. That's what we got to do. Use the grip. All right, so what about this? We got a 31.6 gram bullet strikes a large 56.2 kilogram stationary wooden block and embeds itself in the block. The block and the embedded bullet fly off at a speed of 0 0.631 meters per second. So that must mean the bullet had an initial speed of what? What are we going to, what's the concept that's going to allow us to answer this question? Okay, but what about the momentum? The, the what? Conservation. Conservation of momentum, good. Because it's a closed system. If we consider the system of the bullet and the block, that's a closed system, right? And so the momentum in that system has to be conserved. Right, so what's the block's initial momentum? Zero. Zero, right. But the bullet has some momentum, right? And so therefore the system has some momentum. It's all invested in the bullet initially, but after the bullet hits the block and embeds itself in the block, then they become kind of one object that's going to fly off with the same momentum that the system had originally, right? Would you expect the, the speed to be... I mean, it's a dumb question, also so easy. But would you expect the question or the, the speed to be higher or lower prior to hitting the block? Uh, higher, a, higher. a lot higher, probably. And why is that? Just in a nutshell, if you're explaining this, mass. yeah, a lot smaller mass. Yeah. So the momentum is is distributed to the bullet differently than it would be to the system when they get lodged together because it has such a small mass. It must have really high velocity, right? So this is no big deal. Then we would just use the the formula we would use here is it's in your physics book uh here i'll just pull it up so you can kind of see what it looks like and you tell me what you think these subscripts are going to mean so okay here it is right here Okay, what, is, what does this mean? Uh-huh. Okay, so... Uh -huh. Every year, you bring your books home, and then it's time to turn it It's like, wow, I, I hope they're where I left them, because if they're not, I don't know where I put them. Dude, that's the truth right there. <laughs> High school in the shell uh, <laughs> Okay, so, oh, we got a new one. Nice. Look at that. She's just Johnny on the spot here. So, conserve yeah, momentum. What does this mean? What are these subscripts? I don't get what you mentioned. Um, what do those mean, you suppose? P sub A2 and P sub B2 and P sub A1 and P sub B2. Momentum of the second object plus the momentum of the. Okay, good. So object A and object B, yeah, right? That's what I mean. One, they use one to mean prior to the collision, and, and two is after the collision, right? But so that that's all it is. So for us, then this would look more like I think there's maybe an easier way to write this. We could say the initial momentum. So we've got the momentum of the lowercase b will be the bullet. How about because that's yeah. small. The initial momentum of the bullet plus the initial momentum of the block must equal the final momentum of the bullet plus block, right? When they're lodged together. Does that make sense? Okay, they're going to be just as one at the end. All right, so you already told me that that's zero, right? And we know momentum is defined as the product of what? Two things. No, this one's not. No, not it's that the one, but the one? one below. Second one, is, yeah, second one is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's, well, what's the definition of momentum in general? What's momentum? Mass of what velocity. two? Mass times velocity. So this is just going to be M, the velocity of the bullet, the initial velocity of the bullet, bullet equals the combined mass. So I'm going to call that, what do we call that? Capital, well, that's M sub B. This is M sub B plus B times V of B plus B, 
right? Yeah. What are we solving for? Uh, initial velocity of the bullet, bullet, I think. Yeah. Okay, so all I have to do is divide both sides of this by the mass of the bullet, right? And it's not a big deal. Boom. So we get the velocity, initial velocity of the bullet is just this whole thing. So what are those numbers? Five. So let's see, the, the combined mass is going to be what? Combined mass is mm -hmm. going to be... Uh, you see anything uh, that's a little bit suspicious up there? Kilograms. Five kilograms. kilograms. Good. 56 point either five... Kilograms, thousand grams in a kilogram. So how many decimal places do I have to slide that? Three. Three? Okay, so that's going to be the same thing as point zero three one six kilograms. Oh, oh yeah. whoops, hang on. Yeah, that's right. That's yep. right. Okay. <laughs> so if I add that, if I add that to 56.2, what do I get? 56.2 is 56.2, there you go. Two, one, three, six. Three, three, six, three, one, six. Okay, kilograms, standard units, times the combined velocity, which is Point six three one divided by the mass of the bullet, which we said was 0 0.0316. And so that's just a calculator number, right? So we'll pull up the calculator and see what we get. Predictions. No cheating. What are you going to get? No, no calculators. Well, yeah. predictions. Six thousand. Okay. Six thousand. Six thousand. That'd be a pretty fast bullet, wouldn't it? Six thousand meters. That's that's pretty fast. That'd be twelve thousand miles per hour. That's pretty fast. What are you saying? <laughs> times point six three one divided by point zero three one six. And the answer is So close to what, what did you say? Oh. Did you really? Price is right, she's wrong. Oh, <laughs> that's not bad. And we had how many sig figs, I think? Three sig figs. So that's going to make that, what, 1120? That's pretty close. Pretty close. Okay, 1120 meters per second. That's pretty fast. Well, it's fast, though. Okay, so, so that one's not such a big deal, right? Piece of cake. But this gets a little tougher. So now what, what happens here? Let's say you've got a car traveling due east and a car traveling due north, and they smash together and, and stick together, and they, they just kind of slide off together. And let's say this happens to happen, that happens to happen. This happens right as they are driving onto an ice-covered pond on which a passing truck has spilled a load of WD-40. So there's just happens all the time. So there's very little friction. So the cars are going to slide off, right, without any friction. Well, that would make it pretty slippery. I think we're slippery enough with the ice and the WD-40. So, so let's see. Here. When they stick together, after the collision, we want to know what's going to be the, the, the trajectory along which the cars travel and at what speed. In other words, what's going to be the combined momentum? So you see, this gets a lot more complicated because it's going to be at some angle, isn't it? Are you taping this? Right? Am I taping this? I am taping this. Thanks for asking. Okay, so what do we do? What do we do? This sounds, this is kind of a, this is a good question. It's a combination of a lot of stuff you've done, right? We're taking this most recent idea and, and we're going to combine that with all this other vector stuff you've done all year, right? So now let's think about this for a second. If, if the so momentum of the system is conserved, 
What does that tell you about the components of momentum? Do you think? They equal each other. What do you got going there? Put that away. That's a <laughs> Put that away. Uh, so what about the momentum is a vector quantity, right? If momentum is conserved, then that means all parts of momentum are conserved, including the direction, right? So the components of the momentum of the system must also be conserved, right? Does that make sense? Because the components are going to add up to give us the final momentum vector, direction and magnitude, right? So that's actually pretty useful, though, because we could say that, now let's look at it this way. If I've got my initial momentum of car number one, which is traveling due east, here's the mass and here's the velocity. So if we break this up into, let's say, eastward and northward components, those, those work well because east is the x direction and north is the y direction, right? So when we say x component, that's synonymous with east component. North component would work for y component. So then what's going to be the, the y component or the north component of the first car's momentum? Nothing. Nothing. It's traveling east, right? It's traveling due east. So it's got no northward component. What's going to be the eastward component of the second car? Nothing. 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 Nothing, right? So this is pretty convenient because then we know that the system as a whole, we know that the east component of the momentum of the system is going to be completely articulated or, or, or uh, contained in, in, in which of the two objects? The first one, right? The first one is the, it contains all of the eastward component of momentum of the system, and the second one, all the northward component, right? So that makes this pretty simple because then all we have to do is take, let's just represent this momentum vector for now. I'm not going to put a number on it. But let's make this one blue. That one's due east, right? Let's make this one red. That's the one that's due north. If I add those vectors up tip to tail, because they're the components of the system, right? What do we get? That's the actual momentum of the system, isn't it? System of both cars. So when they lock together, in what direction are they going to travel? Well, that direction, aren't they, right? Because now both of those two components are being combined in one big car that's sticking together. See what I'm saying? OK? And so all we'd have to do then is just make a little table and find out what the, we don't even have to make the table, do we? Because really, we could just say, well, these vectors are already components. They're already in the right directions. So we could call this, uh, let's call this P1. Let's call this P2. And the total momentum is just the square root of P1 squared plus P2 squared, right? By Pythagorean theorem. How are we going to get the direction? How are we going to find theta? Arc tangent of what divided by what? P2 over P1, right? That makes sense? Not a big deal, right? We can do that. OK, what about, do we need to do that one, or are you guys OK with that? Let's finish it. All right. So so let's. Uh, these are really just calculator numbers. Let's let's do this on a calculator then. So let's calculate line one here. We're just going to calculate P one. How about so P one is one six eight seven times nineteen point two. Right. That's the magnitude of the blue vector right there. The magnitude of the red vector is, uh, can't see what I'm doing here. 1, 6, 7, 5 is the mass times 30.3. Okay, we get that. So then the combined momentum must be square root of P1, which is that guy, squared, plus P2, which is that guy, squared. There it is. So it's 60. That's the combined momentum, right? 
is 60,207 kilogram meters per second, and we can even find the direction. So arc tangent of the northward traveling car's momentum divided by the eastward traveling car's momentum. Okay, and there's the angle, 57.5 degrees. So are those my answers? Is that what they're asking for? No, you need to find the meters per second. Ah, i got to find the speed, right? So I've got to, how am I going to do that? If the combined momentum, so the magnitude of the purple momentum vector is 60,207, how am I going to find the speed? Divide by the combined mass, right? Because that's the momentum of the, of the joined cars. So if I take this guy right here, divided by the quantity, 1687 plus 1675. So what, let's take a, take a guess. Let's try your physics intuition here. What's, what's its speed going to be? Okay. Two. That's fine. Yeah. You're moving yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 20, it's going to be less than no. two weeks. 25. Okay. 23.2. Okay, I need one more. One person's got to join the fight here. 26. All right, let's see. And the winner is... Okay. Why does that make sense? Yeah, Well, it's they they get heavier, but their momentum is is right. Ship, you see what I'm saying? Because it's a vector quantity, it's hard to calculate. It's hard to calculate because it's not going to be a linear relationship, right? All right. So there we go. So 17.9 and what was the other one we got? Uh, 57.5 degrees. Okay. All right. So you can do a problem. You have to do a problem like that. Here's the last one you got to do on the second assignment. This is a pretty tricky one. So see if you can just tell me at least conceptually what's going on with this. A canoe with two occupants has a total mass. So this is the canoe plus the occupants, right? 22 or 228.7 kilograms. It glides along on a still lake. Isn't that a pretty picture? Uh, 41.5 degrees north of east is the direction, and the magnitude of the velocity is 2.27 meters per second. One of the occupants, whose mass is 75.2 kilograms, dives due north off the boat with a speed of 2.39 meters per second. The canoe, with its remaining occupant, moves along at what speed and in what direction? Okay, how? What's the thinking here? The guy jumps off. Oh, um, he jumps off, so he pushes the canoe back and pushes the pushes the south. Yeah. Okay, so. How do I shoot in your time and space? The boat. Okay, so there's going to be okay. So the combined the system is is what 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 what's what comprises the system we're looking at here? The person. The person and the canoe, and we're missing something. The water. No, we don't care about the water. The water. We're assuming that the water is just that's what we're moving on, but it's not contributing. We're ignoring friction here. So, the person. Which person are you talking about when you say the person? I guess there's yeah. So the one leaving and the canoe plus its other occupant, right, are all part of the system, right? So the momentum has to be conserved. So the initial momentum, when they're all in the boat, that's the momentum of the system, right? And that's got to stay the same the whole time. So if we wanted to write this down as an equation, then we could say, what do we say here? Are we gonna, we're going to say the momentum of person A and person B, let's say, has to equal, before the guy jumps off, has to be the momentum of person A 
plus the momentum of person B who's with the canoe, right? That has to be true, right? So what's this? Well, that's given to us. This momentum is described by this mass, that velocity, and that direction, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Afterwards, this momentum is pretty simple. It's just this guy diving due north, right, with this speed. Okay, what we're looking for then is what's left over, right? So what's that going to look like? How are we going to do this? What do you think? Free body diagram. Free body well, we don't really need a free body diagrams for forces, but we probably want to graph this thing. We probably want to draw a picture, right? So here's our, here's, here's the, the purple vector is going to be at which angle? Where's the angle? We're at 41.5 north of east, so it's something like that. Yeah, something like that. I could break that up into components though, couldn't I? Yeah. Right? So that's going to have, that's going to have a, an east component and a north component, right? And those have to stay the same the whole time. Okay. What's the sum of the red and blue vectors has to be the purple vector, right? So if I'm trying to solve for the blue vector, what would I have to do to both sides to subtract the red vector? Uh, yeah. Some, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do I have to do? Nine like if I'm going to make a table here, let's, let's think of it this way. Okay, I'd have to subtract, either subtract this from both sides, right? That's one way to look at it. Or if I made a table out of this, where here's my vector column, and here's the x component, east component is x, right? Y component is north, we'll say. Then I should be able to say that vector A, the x component is... This is the guy that's jumping off the boat due north. What, what's his x component then? Zero. 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 Right. zero. right. Okay, put that away. So his x component is zero. What's his y component or his north component going to be? Zero. Two. That, right? Okay. Well, let's, let's get that. That's a calculator number. Let's just put that in the calculator. I want, I want you guys to see how this fits in the table. And then if you if once you get this into the table, oh shoot, what I got. Then it's not that hard to do. So seventy-five point two times two point two seven. No. Two point three nine, there we go. Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, right. oh, well, thank you, John. Thanks for You're welcome, John. Oh. 179.728, right? You have to multiply it by one. No, I, I just I put the time sign in there. I don't want to delete it, so I'll just put one there. Uh, Check. Okay. Yeah. So the, we're looking for the components of the blue vector. That's what we don't know, right? So that's P sub B. It's B vector. P sub B, we don't know what those are, right? Let's just call those, I'm just going to call this, uh, let's just call this X and this Y, just so they're simple variables, right? Uh, when I add those up, what should they equal? Um, P, B. Yeah, they should be the... The components of the purple vector, because that's the that's the momentum of the system, right? Right. So he liked that. He noticed that. Yeah. Okay. So so what do we got here then? We've got the the total momentum before the total momentum is two twenty eight point seven times two point two seven, and then we got to break that into components.
This is kind of tough to do on the day before, <laughs> day before spring break, isn't it? But we gotta get through this. I need more so. periods. Oh my god! Does that have to last year? Like, I was like, yeah, we always get like a day in March. So. Okay, so there's oh, time's worn again. I keep doing that. So there's there's the combined momentum, but now we gotta break that into components. So which one is gonna be? Just remind me. Just make a little practice here. Which one's gonna get multiplied by sine theta? Uh, the vertical or the, the y component or the x component? X. The y component. The y component, because that's opposite, because that's my theta, right? Yep. And then x would be cosine. Yeah. So we've got this guy times cosine of 41.5. Is that what it was? Uh, Okay, so there's our calculator number. The x component is then the x component is that number. So we'll just call it about 389, but it's in the calculator, right? Y component is going to be same calculation with a sign. Three forty three point nine nine. So three forty four. Okay, how can I solve for how can I solve for the X and Y components of, of the guy in the boat that's left behind? Piece of B. What has to be true here? Physics equal That's well, of course they do. But what has to be true? How can I solve for x? Sam, how can I solve for x here? How can I solve for x? Well, well, like so, if you do x plus y equals the equation, then you can solve for x and plug it into the last equation. Into the okay, but. So, x plus this x plus that y. Now, now think think what has to be true here. I know that the components of the momentum have to be conserved, right? Mm -hmm. So before everything above the purple line is before everything, or is after actually, right? Everything below is before. This is when wow. both occupants are in the boat. So both the x component not only does momentum have to be conserved, but the x component of momentum has to stay the same the whole time, right? Yeah. So so the x component before must equal the x component afterwards. So x, which is just the x component of the guys after, you know, who's left in the boat, is just equal to 389. It has to be, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we know that then. We know that... P B sub X equals, it's in my calculator, it's 389. How could I solve for the Y component? Uh, minus 344 minus much of the Yeah, yeah, so it's just going to be the sum of those two has to equal 344, right? So 344, that calculator number minus that one gives me P sub Y. Agreed? Okay. So what's that going to be? Find out. So the three forty four one minus the one seventy nine number gives me what? Gives me about one sixty four, right? And so there are my components, right? All I've got to do to find the, the net momentum or the, the momentum of the of object B is just to apply the Pythagorean theorem because there's my x component and my y component, right? So if I made a vector out of this, I'm going in the x direction about 389, my momentum component, and my y component, my north component is 164. 
And so there's the overall momentum, right, of the dude in the boat that's left behind. And there's the angle, right? So what are our answers? Square root of 389 number squared plus 164 number squared is, what's it going to be? Uh, Two twenty-five, four twenty-three, four or, or four twenty-three. Okay, about four twenty-two, right? Is going to be the the total momentum. Is that my answer? Is that what they're looking for? Is that what they're looking for? What are they looking for? Four the speed. They want the speed, not the momentum. So what do I do? Divide by what? The total mass. We have. I want, but it wants to know the canoe with its remaining occupant. So what am I dividing by? The mass the minus the 75. So yeah. that minus that, right? Because mm -hmm. the 75 kilogram guy jumped out. So we divide that by. Maybe he, divided by the quantity 228.7 minus 75.2. There it is. <laughs> so the boat moves away how fast? 2.75 meters per second. See, when it started, it was 2.27. Okay? But the guy jumped out. The guy bailed out and kind of pushed off on the boat, right? Okay, what's the direction going to be? All I've got to do is divide now. Here's my picture, right? I've just got to, there's, is, there's the final momentum of the guy in the boat. I'm just going to arc tangent of 160, 164 number over 389 number, yes. right? Arc tangent 164 divided by 389. What's it going to be? 21. 21? Pretty close. I was close. I said 23. Did you seriously say 23? Yeah, well, you went over. 22.9. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> You're sticking to that price, right? <laughs> Philosophy here, aren't you? Okay, that's it, right? So we got it. Physics got answered us. So it's moving away at an angle about 23 degrees at a speed of 2.75 meters per second. Pretty amazing that, you know, you guys can, you can do that now. You yeah, can make can that prediction. It. That's pretty good. Just, wait all the friction. Just give us a week and we really won't well know. Yeah. <laughs> now you got to be able to calculate this in real time on the boat. That's the next thing. Yeah. Right. With sitting on the boat. Are we anywhere near Tesla on this? Yeah, we're getting close. Oh, my God. Yeah. I really did not think that was going to be your answer. No, it's, I mean, we, you, we're we fairly close. So here's, here's what we got. If you look at the Moodle site right now, here's, that's not it. Unit 5, here's the calendar. So the 9.2 is the, I'll move these back a little bit. I'll move that one back to a couple days after spring break. And then in April, I'll move those back a couple days. But we're looking at the week after spring break, we're going to wrap this stuff up and test on it. Okay? Deal? And then are we almost done with math? Yes, yeah, we're getting really close to being done with math. How many more chapters of like straight math? Uh, one. This last one? This is the last one, guys. This is, well, no, we got one more after this. Can we volunteer? But, but I'll tell you what, the math gets a lot easier because here's, and this is why we got to do this one. The math gets easier because we're going to learn about how to deal with an energy budget, keeping track of the energy of a system. And when you keep track of the energy is, a, is not a vector quantity. Everybody raise your hands and cheer and whistle. And it's not it's not a vector quantity, and so the math gets really simple, yes. right? You don't have to, no longer do you have to deal with all the vector stuff, right? I like the vectors. Do you okay. have a different color than red for a dry I do. Do you want a different color? Yeah. I'll get you a different color. When you're ready for some new formulas, you let me know. And I'll... Oh, you. Uh, so you're gonna come in in the morning and now redo it, so it looks pretty. Oh, okay. Color coded. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um.